what up what up what up this is your boy Chris Cross 304 checking in lots going on in the world of sports in the last several days on Monday you had the NBA awards awards given out like MVP defensive player of the year rookie of the year offensive player of the year so on and so on yeah we're going to focus on a couple of those today uh there was no shock hopefully there was no shock that Giannis Antetokounmpo won the MVP award I mean you can make some claims for James Harden uh, and a couple other guys obviously uh, but we should not be surprised that he won that award. If we're going to be surprised about anything, it's how tearful and uh, sad he was. Not really sad, you know, really joy, but tears streaming from his eyes uh, during uh, his speech. And this is a brief amount of what he had to say. Uh, I want to thank the, the front office, the ownership, for believing in me. And I was 18 years old back in Greece. Uh, you know, they allow me uh, to lead this team and trust me. And uh, I want to thank the city of Milwaukee. I want to thank uh, my country, Greece, and uh, Nigeria for always supporting me. You know, uh, back in Greece, when the watch the game is 5 a.m., 6 a.m., so they always stay up and what? So you hear uh, Giannis there, and you hear this through all, almost all the players, uh, really, who won awards. Uh, it's about the team and thanking the team. And, you know, most players go on to thank their mom, hopefully if they're still alive. Uh, but And you really like to see those things. And, and this is why these guys are professionals. You know, when you go to some high school or college games, you see a lot of me, 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 me. But the guys that really make it uh, are the professionals, obviously. They're there for a reason. And you hear one thing constantly, uh, that it's all about the team. And uh, you move on to other awards at the NBA award ceremony and you see guys like Rudy Gobert uh, winning defensive player of the year and no one should be shocked about that I mean he's a stud on defense and he helps the Utah Jazz uh, in many ways getting to the playoffs and you know just being a force within the NBA and this is what uh, Gobert had to say I say this all the time but it's a team game and uh, you know when you have guys that bring it out every night you know coming every day with the same focus and you know, and uh, I compete like we do, uh, it's inspirational. And, you know, from the coaching staff, Queen, who is just a little competitive. And again, you hear uh, another player, like I said, the theme of the, uh, the night at the NBA Awards is just the team, focusing on the team, thanking coaches, family, uh, because there's a lot that goes into just when you see a guy on the court playing basketball. I mean, they're missing a lot of family time. Uh, you know, they... They got to give a lot to their coaches in terms of, you know, being at practice, competing in games. They got to believe in their coaches and things of that nature. And it leads guys to say thank you uh, when they win awards like this and remind people as well that it's not, it shouldn't be looked at as an individual award. Uh, but a lot of the reasons for what they're winning uh, is based on the team effort. Uh, another guy winning a, a very special award, and, you know, you see him in all types of highlight reels throughout the year, and that's Luka Doncic. Uh, winning Rookie of the Year, and this is a little what he had to say. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Trey and DeAndre for amazing seasons, and not just them, you know, the whole rookie class. I think it's it's amazing, and we can make something big. And after, I want to thank uh, my family, my girl, Kike, Bill, Rick, all my, te my team, my whole teammates, so thank you very much. And again, you see uh, another guy thanking his team, his family, his girlfriend, obviously, and not only that, but all the rookie class. I mean, it was a very good rookie year for the NBA. And when you look at the NBA draft, you got another great rookie class coming in. Uh, I mean, with Zion Williamson, 
R.J. Barrett, uh, Morant, uh, all these guys coming in, and the list goes on and on in that first round of the draft. So it's, it's going to be another special year of uh, rookies, rookie highlights, uh, the rookie all-star game, uh, whatever you want to look forward to. But it's going to be another good year for the NBA uh, in terms of rookies. Uh, you're listening to the community with your boy Chris Cross 304 as we continue uh, to look at the NBA. Uh, it appears Kevin Durant declined a $31.5 million option. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, what that entails. Uh, but that's breaking news that Kevin Durant has declined a $31.5 player option. This is being reported uh, already uh, by the NBA. Uh, and now you have guys like Stephen A. saying he sees KD signing with the Knicks or the Nets. I mean, so that, that would just be something uh, to see. Um, I'm not quite sure why he would decline that, uh, except that, you know, he wants to be an unre unrestricted free agent. But with the injury, why not take the 31.5 this year? Um, so right now, Kevin Durant's in New York, uh, where they're trying to decide on KD's uh, future options. But according to ESPN, the New York Knicks, Brooklyn Nets, and LA Clippers are also believed to be considerations. Durant can sign a four-year, $164 million deal and also remains eligible to sign a five-year, $221 million uh, deal. And this is amazing considering that he may be out all of next year. And if you're a team like the Knicks, why not go ahead and go after him and start focusing on 2020, 2021 now with R.J. Barrett. You have Kevin Durant, and I'm sure guys will come flocking to the Knicks uh, if you can get Kevin Durant regardless uh, of the injury because guys will waste a year uh, in preparation for 2020, 2021. So that's the situation here. When we come back, we'll discuss uh, other breaking news like UFC rankings. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with you after this. Hello? Have you ever heard of Conor McGregor? He's like the greatest fighter ever. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it together. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it together. He's gonna fight, wait, he's gonna fight, wait, hold your breath till the end of the night. Last fight of call, UFC at its height, yeah. Bringing that thunder with all his might, saying, Step up, step up, step up. wanna fight? Huh? Hold up, think twice. Ah. Gladiator assassin, reckless, no abandon. Walk through that cage, he'll leave your ass stranded. Wake up, hey, where you at? Hey, got hit in the head with a baseball bat. Thinking I'm so dizzy, where the hell am I at? Black and white saying you just been attacked by Connor McGregor, Connor McGregor. Beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it together. Connor McGregor, Connor McGregor. Beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it together. Drop it, drop it, drop it like it's hot. Think they got a chance, believe it or not. No. Talking mad stuff, looking so confident. But you was only here for the paycheck and the rent. What? McGregor don't need a check, he's so rich. Heck, got the money so fast it broke your neck. Yep. They live on set, pay the bill, I'm in debt. Millions on the line, he gon' win, raise the bet. Do it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I won. I'm going to the club for some fun. Yes, we won. Time to go out for some fun, thanks to Connor McGregor, Connor McGregor, beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it together. Connor McGregor, Connor McGregor, beating bitches down like it's whatever. Getting my money always, forever. He's gonna win, let's get it. What up, what up? This your boy Crisscross 304, checking in. And you're listening to the community where we keep you entertained throughout the game. Join us live for UFC 239, Saturday, July 6th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
This is gonna be one you're not gonna wanna miss, and it could go down as the best UFC event of all time. It's shaping up that way. Listen to the main events. John Jones, always a great headliner, 24 and one, versus Thiago Santos, 21 and six. In your co-main event, Amanda Nunez, 17 and four, versus Holly Holm, 12 and four, for the Bantamweight Championship. In fight three, in a light heavyweight bout, Jan Blakowski versus Luke Rockhold. That will be a big one. Luke Rockhold, 16 and four, Blakowskiewicz, 23 and eight. Fight four, heavyweight fight, Junior Dos Santos, 21 and five, versus Francis Ngannou, 13 and three. That will be a blockbuster fight. Fight five, Jorge Masvidal, 33 and 13 versus your boy, Ben Askren, undefeated, 19 and 0. It does not get better than that. Again, join us live Saturday, July 6th from the T-Mobile oh, Arena. Big punch by the Korean Zombie! Moicano's down! Can he hold on? And the fight is over. Wow! Goodness gracious. I never saw that coming, I'll be honest. I was saying before this fight started, that Renato Moicano is going to win this fight, no problem. And the Korean zombie on the first punch, flush to the face, Moicano goes right to the ground. And he was dazed and confused. McGregor's in trouble. McGregor's in trouble. And McGregor taps, the fight is over. Khabib, an obvious celebration, he'll retain the championship belt. Now he jumps the ring. Oh, and now there's a fight in the crowd. Khabib jumps over the ring. There's a fight in the crowd. The fans are going crazy. Now there's a fight in the ring. McGregor takes a left, a right, a left. Oh boy, it looks like some of Khabib's people have jumped into the ring. And there's what up, what up? This is your boy Crisscross 304 back for segment two. And you're hearing some of the sights and sounds from uh, the UFC. And most importantly, just the other day, Chan Sung Jun shocked Renato Moicano. And in the new, new UFC rankings, he's jumped up six spots from number 12 to number six and is now legit. When you look at the featherweight division ruled right now by Max Holloway, you have Alexander Volkanovsky at number one, Brian Ortega two, Jose Aldo three, Frankie Edgar number four, Zabit Magomed Shiripov number five, and then sitting at six, Chan Sung Jun, who moved up six spots in the featherweight rankings. Moving on to the flyweight and bantamweight rankings, you have Henry Cejudo, who rules both of those divisions. Okay, so new rankings in the flyweight division. Drusir Formiga, number one. Number two, Joseph Benavidez. Number three, Alexander Pantoja. And we'll leave it there. In the bantamweight, also ruled by Henry Cejudo, number one, Marlon Moraes. Despite losing to him, he still remains number one. But uh, someone to look at, number two, Al Jermaine Sterling, who should really be in line uh, for uh, the B uh, Bantamweight title shot against Henry Cejudo, who also wants to move up to featherweight and challenge Max Holloway. So Sterling might be in waiting. And then you have Rafael Asuncayo and Peter Yan. And Peter Yan is a serious fighter at number four, if you didn't see his last fight. So those are some things to take into consideration there in those three lighter weight divisions. In the lightweight division itself, Khabib Nurga, Nurga Gomedov, your champion, number one interim champion, and they'll face off at UFC 242, Dustin Poirier. Then you have Tony Ferguson, number two, sitting in, in weight. He should be next in line to get a fight. Then you have Conor McGregor, still at three, Donald Cerrone, the Cowboy, number four, and Justin Gaethje, number five. In the welterweight division, uh, Kamara Usman ruling that division as the champion. Number one, Tyrone Woodley, who he beat for the belt. Number two, Colby Covington. Number three, Rafael Dos Andros. Keep an eye on number five, Ben Askren, who's undefeated and will fight at UFC 239. And speaking of UFC 239, there you heard in a preview recorded about a month ago, uh, Ngannou, Francis Ngannou, will fight this Saturday rather than the following Saturday. That was a big shift. Uh, when Tyrone Woodley had to pull out of this next fight. In the middleweight division, Robert Whitaker, champion, and you have Israel Adesanya, the interim champion. So that's going to have to be messed with at some point. Israel Adesanya undefeated, 
very good fighter. Number two, Yoel Romero. Number three, Luke Rockhold, who we'll see uh, in about 10 days from now. Number four, Kevin Gastelum. And number five, Jack Hermanson. Number six, Ronald Souza. Number seven, Chris Weidman. I mean, it's probably one of the toughest divisions. That's why we give you so many here. Light heavyweight, John Jones. We'll see him next week against Thiago Santos. Daniel Cormier, number one. Thiago Santos, number two. Anthony Smith, number three. Alexander Gustafsson, who says he's not fighting anymore, but we'll see. Number four, Dominic Reyes, number five. And then you move on to the heavyweight division. Daniel Cormier, the champion. Stipe Miocic, number one. Francis Ngannou, who we'll see this Saturday, number two. Junior Dos Santos, three. Curtis Blades, four. Derek Lewis, five. Alistair Overeem, six. Then you got Jessica Andre, the champion of the women's strawweight with Rose Namajunas, number one. Women's flyweight champion, Valentina Shevchenko. Number one contender still, Jessica I, even though she got knocked out pretty quickly by Shevchenko. Then you got Caitlin Chuk again, sitting there in weight as well. One notable, Andrea Lee, uh, beat Montana De La Rosa this past weekend. She moved up three spots from number 10 to number seven. And I, and I said during that broadcast that she looks just like Holly Holm, a young Holly Holm. So keep an eye on Andrea Lee because she's going to get better and better. And she's seven now. But I can tell you a year from now, she won't be seven, even in a few months from now after her next fight. And then in the champion of the women's bantamweight and the women's featherweight, you have Amanda Nunez. So when you look at those rankings, you got number one, Holly Holm, who moved up one spot, who was two. So that's going to be a big event at UFC 239. You got the champion versus number one contender. Holly Holm lost the title to Nunez, so she's going to be ready for this fight. And number two, Ketlin Vieira. Number three, Jermaine Day Randami. So a lot going down there uh, in the UFC rankings, lots of changes, but that's your basic breakdown. Your pound for pound top ranked fighters, Daniel Cormier, number one. John Jones, number two, Khabib Nurmagomedov, number three, Henry Cejudo, four, and Max Holloway, five, Amanda Nunez, six, Kamaru Usman, seven, Dustin Poirier, eight. And I'll tell you right now, in the first seven, you could ask anybody, and they might give you a different seven, but the seven's going to remain the same. Because any one of those, I mean, you could put Amanda Nunez, number one, you could put Henry Cejudo, number one, you could for sure put Khabib, number one in the pound for pound ranking so those are going to completely keep changing although there was no change this time around stay tuned for segment three as we'll break down the baseball uh, situation and look at some scores uh, from this past evening and current games going on as of right now there's your boy crisscross 304 you're listening to the community find us on instagram at crisscross 304 at sh sports hip hop at the community 50 at mma monsters 82 and make sure you subscribe to the channel here Stay tuned, this is Tear Down the Walls. We'll be right back. Fuck the devil. Fuck the devil. Fuck the fuck the fuck the devil. Fuck the devil. Fuck the devil. Fuck the fuck the fuck the devil. Hey, tear down the wall. Hey, tear it down. Hey, I only wanna worship one thing, that's his crown. Hey, tear down the wall. Hey, tear it down. Hey, tear it down. Hey, tear it down. Hey, tear down the wall. Hey. Tear him down, ay. I only wanna worship one thing, that's his crown, ay. Tear down the walls, ay. Tear him down, ay. Tear him down, ay. Tear him down, ay. Oh yeah. I'm a worship ladder, I don't give a fuck. Oh yeah. Fuck you motherfuckers, got a problem with it. Oh yeah. Something about your ways, tell me use a bitch. I'm bouncing up and down in your face like a pogo stick. Boing, boing. Preaching about my soldier status, that's what's up. Beep, beep. Chillin' in my belly with my roof up Beep, beep Cruising down your township glances Staring all the way to the grave Living life for the mothership Yeah His blood dropping Making all the evil go away Hey Trusting in your Christ, Yahweh, he don't play hey. It's like living life on an island all day So place your negative ways on display Hey Tear down the wall Hey Tear it down Hey I only wanna worship one thing That's his crown Hey Tear down the wall Hey Tear it down, ay, tear it down, ay, tear it down, ay, tear down the walls, ay, tear them down, ay, I only wanna worship one thing, that's his crown, ay, tear down the walls, ay, tear them down, ay, tear them down, ay, tear them down, ay, what's your name, cuz, where you came from, guys love is so deep, what you afraid of, 
What's your status at? Put your faith away. This ain't no way to live, that's what God say. Cause he planned for you, wrote the Bible for you. And he died for you, but he coming back for you. Quickly came, quickly gone, till we raptured. Making plans to be gone, don't be captured. Ay, I'm just waiting on my master. Ay, I'm just waiting to be raptured. Ay, I'm just waiting on my master. Ay, I'm just waiting to be raptured. What up, what up? This your boy Chris Cross 304 checking in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel today. Live UFC events each and every Saturday. Follow our playlists for each UFC event, which includes the face-offs and live updates, as well as interviews leading up to each event. Also, follow us daily as we live stream baseball events, MLB to be exact, also football, NFL, college football, and basketball by way of the NBA and the NCAA. Follow our playlists, which we are well known for, like Home Run Hitters, Dunk Dynasty, and Fights and Ejections. You'll be sure to like those. Make sure you subscribe so when new videos are posted, you see them. This your boy Chris Cross 304. Let's get back to it. What up, what up? This your boy Chris Cross 304 checking back in live. Here on the program, we're going to look at some of the baseball scores and situations from last night. Number one, Rangers win 5 3. They're 43 and 36, but 15 and 21 on the road. So that was a big win for them over the Tigers. And the Tigers, unfortunately, are only 11 and 25 at home. So another loss for them at home. The Yankees win 4 to 3. They're now 51 and 28 and 30 and 14 at home. Whoa. So the Yankees are kicking butt at home. Still doing very well on the road as well. The Phillies beat the Mets 7 to 5. Uh, and we saw Kapler get tossed last night. Uh, after one of his players got uh, hit by a pitch, it was really going towards his head, uh, but it shrugged his shoulder, hit him in the shoulder. Uh, and then right as Kapler left the dugout, the umpire threw him out immediately. One of the quickest ejections you'll see, and you can see that here on the channel if you want to. The Padres win 8-3 over the Orioles. White, uh, Red Sox beat White Sox uh, 6-3 at home. Royals win on the road versus the Indians 8-6. The Nationals win 6-1 over the Marlins, who are struggling at 30 and 47 but the Nationals are 38 and 40 and if they can get a couple wins here before the break uh, could really help their chances of making the playoffs in the second uh, half of the season Braves win on the road 3 to 2 versus the Cubs Astros win at home 5-1 over the Pirates Mariners win 8-3 over the Brewers on the road and the Twins win at home 9 to 4 against the Rays Twins leading the division now 51 and 27 25 and 13 at home so they're doing very well on the road as well. Their very consistent baseball team are the Twins, almost doubling their losses uh, with wins, both at home and on the road. Athletics win on the road 7-3 over the Cardinals. Dodgers win against the Diamondbacks. Dodgers were on the road. They win 3-2. Giants win at home 4-2 over the Rockies. And then finally, the Angels win at home 5-1 versus the Reds. So lots of baseball games going on. Uh, and that's the situation in baseball. Also, a side note, Manny Machado all in the news, but he hit his 100th career home run at Canham Yards uh, yesterday. And it, guess what? It was an absolute monster home run. And we'll get that for you later in the channel. 455 feet. Wow. So despite some negative stuff for Manny Machado, it's all positive now, baby. Coming back and getting the win. The team also, the Padres also won in his one-game absence. And I can tell you the, uh, the umpires probably are not happy with Manny Machado, but they don't have to be because he's still winning, and so are the Padres. So that's the situation in baseball. That's what's going on. This is your show today. This is your boy, Chris Cross 304. We'll leave you at this time. Be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel while you are listening. We'll be back with you tomorrow for more uh, sports information. It's your boy Chris Cross 304. Holla back. Oh, a big punch by the Korean zombie. Moicano's down. Can he hold on? And the fight is over. Wow. 
goodness gracious. I never saw that coming, I'll be honest. I was saying before this fight started that Renato Moicano is going to win this fight, no problem. And the Korean zombie on the first punch, flush to the face, Moicano goes right to the ground. And he was dazed and confused. This is the venture of the community here is the venture. And this is the venture of the community here is the venture. And this is the venture of the community here is the venture. And this is the venture of the community. 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 Communities, we have a break, 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 communities,